Welcome to section 7.4 and 7.5. All right, gentle people, in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to be determining the H plus concentration in certain solutions. The first type of problem that I want to hit you guys with is what happens when I dissolve a strong acid into solution and I want to determine its H plus concentration. So the first thing we have to do is establish what happens when I put HCl in solution. Well, we know it's a strong acid, so I can write HCl, hard arrow, H plus, plus Cl minus, and everything here is aqueous. I know this dissociates 100%. Now, if it breaks up 100% and I use this hard arrow, what that tells me is I have a stoichiometry problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Chem 1A, and I'm going to set this up as a simple stoichiometry problem. I'm going to use mole ratios. So what I'm going to say is I have 0.1 molar HCl. Now remember what molarity means. It means that I have 0.1 moles of HCl per liter. Now, if I look at this dissociation reaction and see that it goes to completion or goes to 100%, for every one mole of HCl, I'll have one mole of H+. And you guys can see that as HCl and H+, are in a one-to-one -one ratio. So at the end of the day, I have 0.1 moles of H plus in one liter. So that gives me an H plus concentration of 0.1 mole. So you guys should be very comfortable with this because this is the stuff that you guys just did in Chem 1A. Now let's go ahead and try to shift gears. What I want to talk about now is going to be a weak acid. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine the H plus concentration in 3.0 molars of HF. Now remember, HF is a weak acid. Before we get started with the problem, what I want you to do is think about this conceptually. If I look at the H plus concentration from 3.0 molar HF, what would you guess it would be? So remember what a weak acid means. I have HF, and I'm going to draw an equilibrium arrow, H plus plus F minus. Now remember, it's not going to break up completely. That's why I use the equilibrium arrow. So if it doesn't break up completely, I will never reach 3.0 molar with a 3.0 molar solution of HF. It can't be greater, so what it should be is less than 3.0. Now we have to ask ourselves, if we want to go ahead and figure out the H plus concentration, well, what type of problem is this? And so remember in our last slide, we said hard arrow meant stoichiometry. If we have an equilibrium arrow, we just learned in chapter six that this requires an ice table. So that's what we're gonna do to find the H plus concentration for a weak acid. All right, gentle people, so let's go ahead and find this H plus concentration. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the acid dissociation reaction, HF, into H plus and F minus. Because it's an equilibrium, I'm gonna make my ice table, so I, C, E. Now in this problem, they said I had three molars of HF. That's going to be the initial concentration of your acid. So I want you guys to be careful. Whenever they give the concentration of an acid, weak or strong, that is the initial concentration of the acid together before it dissociates. Now, if I'm saying it's before it dissociates or before it breaks up, that means it hasn't broken up yet. And that means that there's going to be zero H plus and zero F minus. Now we can fill out our change row. Since I have zero products, I know that these are going to be positive changes and my HF is going to be a negative change because I'm going to break that HF into these parts. Everything is in a one-to-one -one ratio, so X is across the board. Finally, we can go ahead and do E, which is I plus C. All right, gentle people, now what we have to do is we have to get an equilibrium constant. Now, here's the thing that I want to warn you guys about. I'm not going to give you guys equilibrium constants inside the problem itself. 
It is up to you to realize that I'm talking about an acid and those acid dissociation constants are on your information sheet. So since I wrote down the acid dissociation reaction right here, I have to look up the Ka for HF. So I look up that value on this information sheet, 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. But I also know that I can write my Ka expression. That's going to be H plus times A minus over HA. Now in this case, my A minus is going to be the fluoride ion or F. So if you want to, you can even write it for this particular reaction as F minus over HF. So remember, this is the generic formula. This is the actual formula for this particular problem. So let's go ahead and start plugging some values in. So my Ka is 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. I'm gonna put in my H plus concentration, which is X, my F minus concentration, which is X, and then I see 3.0 minus X for my HF concentration. Now, one thing I want you guys to know look at the value of this Ka. It's really, really tiny. Now this is gonna be true for most weak acids. So what I can do is I can say that anytime I see a minus X or a plus X, well, it should be insignificant. So I can disregard that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify this equation. 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth is about x times x is x squared, and then I'm going to go ahead and say that x is negligible, so I'm gonna say 3.0 minus x is about 3.0. This makes the problem way easier to solve, and so what I get is a value that x equals 0.0465. Now we can see that this is indeed a tiny number, it's less than 5% of three, so my assumption was valid. Now remember what X is? X is going to be the H plus concentration. It's also the F minus concentration in this particular problem, but H plus is what I was going after. So there's a couple things that I want you guys to note. One is that when we have strong acids, it's a stoichiometry problem, so go back to Chem 1A. If I have a weak acid, it's an equilibrium problem. You're gonna use your ice table, go back to chapter six. Now, what I want you guys to note also is the disparity in my H plus concentration. So I had 0.1 molar HCl. Then I had HF, which was 30 times as concentrated. So there's 30 times more of HF. Now look at the H plus concentrations. Even though that there is 30 times as much as my HF, I get a tiny portion of H plus coming out of this. And so this is a testament to how weak a weak acid is. It is not going to break up very much, and it is only going to provide very little H plus ions. So we can talk about how much an acid breaks up and how much H plus it makes. And this is called the percent dissociation. The percent dissociation, it's going to be the amount of H plus divided by the initial concentration, so HA itself. So in that last problem that we talked about with the three molar HF, well, we calculated the H plus concentration at 0.046 molar. And so what we can do is put this over three molar times it by 100%. And what we get is 1.5%. So what this number physically means is that 1.5% is the amount of HF that breaks up. So again, this is why we use the equilibrium error. Now you guys can calculate the percent dissociation of various weak acids, and you'll find that they produce tiny numbers like this. What I want you guys to do is practice working with percent dissociation. So if you look at example 7.4 in your textbook, what you will see is they run through an example problem. 
So I want you guys to practice this problem where they give you 0.1 molar solution of lactic acid. They give you the percent dissociation and see if you guys can go ahead and calculate the Ka of lactic acid if we didn't provide this Ka. All right, Chem 1B, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe.